<laughs> Welcome to practice. So today we're going to do a Katona yoga practice that is kind of the opposite of how we tend to approach practice. So normally, like in a vinyasa class or a lot of hatha yoga classes, we'll start up and like build warmth in the body and then we come down to the ground. I don't know if that's as true in the stationary Iyengar um, practice. But there's a lot, we go up and we kind of build some heat and then we end practice on the ground. And uh, I took a class from one of my Katona teachers that took the opposite approach of like, let's get down into the ground of being for a while and play with some hip stuff and then put it up into a lunge. And I, it felt really interesting and so we're gonna play with that. We will do a little bit of a, of a warm up, for lack of a better word, with some dogs and some planks like we've been doing. Um, because I want to build stamina and I want to build your guys' stamina and the more that we kind of use some of those little postures to build some fluency it can be really helpful. So we're going to come right into a downward facing dog and take a dog how we've been practicing which is that 60 degree triangle strength structure and stability. That looks so much better just from a couple practices. So really poking the pubic bone up to the sky, putting a wave in the spine, pressing into the base knuckles of the hand so it's light in the heel of the hand, and really spreading the ball of the foot. And finding those four points of contact and the integrity of the pose. And then let's come forward to a plank. And if you are building strength or you're feeling um, fatigue today, you can always play the movement of all fours to down dog. Or you're going to start to play the line between shooting forward to a plank and then back to a dog. And forward to a plank and back to a dog. And again, that can look like dropping to the knees and back to a dog. And I want you to pick a pace that's sustainable for you, but it's still going to warm you up a little bit. So some of you might decide to really put some speed on it and play the breath, pumping the breath, to start to sort of put a proverbial fire under your butt. That looks awesome. And just that fold and unfold from the hip. Good, and then let's hold the dog for a moment. And right away, take the velocity, the speed off, and feel how you can reform the dog right away. And the heat will start to build a little pliancy. Good, and then come down to all fours. And let's take a block and put it across the center of the mat. We've been playing with this um, to give us a little stability in our floating up dog and so we can kind of feel where the pelvis is because usually in up dog and cobra, I see people and the pelvis is too low to the ground. It's like collapsing. We're not using our legs and then we wonder why it feels compressive in the lower back. So one or two blocks across and then put your pubic bone on the mat, on the block, pardon me. And here now it's very supported so you can kind of linger for a moment and play the game of armpits towards your heart. So find the spiral in the arm and then find the spiral in the legs. So the inner thigh is broadening and spiraling towards the sky. Pull your chest through so the lungs are coming forward. And you're nice, yes, that looks so nice. Good, and now come back to the dog. And now see if you can fold and unfold from the hip all the way into that floating up dog. And you might play it a little slow at first, and then again, depending on how you're feeling today, you might put a little bit of speed on it and maybe even start taking the gaze up as the lungs come through, as the chest comes through the shoulder. Good, a couple more like that. Heating yourself up. It doesn't take much, does it? to warm up. Good. And then find the dog again. And reform it. And feel now that central aliveness, that kind of buzzing that comes with the, the breath and the heat. And then come down to all fours. 
the hard work part's done. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> we are gonna flip the wrist for a moment to again play with the lungs and the opening up of the lungs. Uh, new students to Katona who aren't used to flipping their wrists, I always tell them to start this on all fours and play with rotating the fingers all the way around. And that doesn't come from spiraling the wrist. I noticed yesterday with some of the ladies, they were spiraling from the lower arm and it was getting stuck. They were like, it doesn't go all the way around. And then I came up and took their shoulder like this, the armpit to the heart, and they went, oh, now it goes all the way around. Yes, do you feel that? So then it goes all the way around. So play with just right hand and left hand. And if you're watching the video and you're feeling frisky, you can come into a full plank and do this. And just kind of paw the floor for a moment. Good, that's enough of that. Back down, <laughs> good, that looks really nice. Okay, we're gonna put some blankets across our mat for a pigeon. Like I said, we're gonna play kind of low to the ground today. I like a, quite a few blankets. I actually can do pigeon all the way down on the ground, but it doesn't feel nice to me, you know? Um, Ekapata Rajakapotasana, I think is what you guys call it. Oh, I won't make you do an arm balance state. You're like, that is not a hip opener. She thought I was talking about um, Bakasana. I was telling the students yesterday, so many yoga lineages do, use different Sanskrit names for poses, and they're all made up, so I feel like it's best to speak English, even though I know all those Sanskrit names. It makes it a little easier. Have a couple blocks handy. Um, not everyone will need them, but I like blocks. And there's a couple ways you can enter the pigeon. You can just swing your shin forward from all fours, or if you're wanting a more active practice, you can from a dog lunge the right knee. So you pick. And rather than forcing my shin parallel to the front edge of the mat, I'm gonna let my heel be more in line with my pubis. Very nice, that looks good, yeah. Good, how's that feel? Are you okay? Like I'm stretching. Like I'm stretching, she yeah. says. You can put another blanket under you too, or a bolster if that's better for you. And we won't be up here long, but we are gonna walk up into a little bit of a back bend. So some of you at home, you might take your right hand to your right knee and your left hand to your heel. This is a lot for me personally. So I like to come up on the locks next to my pelvis. Because now what you're working towards, and like right now, I'm not even touching my blankets because I'm going, yes, because I'm going up, up, up. But it's a sense of my perineum is moving down and the like bottom of my right buttock bone is pointing down. Good. And we're, it's almost like that up dog position. We're taking the lungs forward and up. Very good. And now from that, walk yourself up and forward and you can come down onto your forearms if you wish. I like to take one block and place it the long way underneath of my sternum and one block under my head. Yes, exactly, so that one goes the long, yes, right there. And we're gonna be here for a moment, so you can take a second to really organize yourself and get comfy, you know, as comfy as one can be, depending on if you hate pigeon or if it's your best friend, right? Mm -hmm. And then, I like to crawl my hands out here into the shape of a V and wrap my armpits towards my heart and be up on my fingertips because this is such a heavy pose. And do you feel how that brings some buoyancy into the shape, into something that is otherwise heavy and moving down? And sometimes, like right now, because of the shape of my pelvis and how I'm feeling, I need to put a little more height under just my right butt. So I'm folding up my right blank side of my blanket a little more. And that's because I could feel that I was sort of dumped over into that right side. And now the orientation of the shape has really changed. So now the front of the pubis is on the blanket and the right buttock rather than just the buttock bone. It's like the bottom of the seat is spreading. And now as you rest in this shape, I want you to start to tune into your breath and play that the breath is moving up the back body. 
So open up the thread of your imagination. Put your spine on a spit and inhale, let fire rise up your back. Feel how the breath is warmer on the inhale. And as you exhale, let the cool sensation rain down the front of you, grace and water. So think that you're breathing in a sphere around yourself from the perineum to the third eye center, and from the third eye down to the perineum. Really use your imagination so you're putting your mind in the pose and you're able to traverse that terrain. And as the fire, the heat of the back and the water down the front starts to combine in the center of you, it's this sort of steamy center where you become the mediator of grace and effort of fire and water. So that it has a count and a measure because when you put a count on things, you're accountable and you're playing integrity. I want you to take three more full rounds of breath. Fire up the back, water down the front. So good. One more breath. gently walk yourself back up lengthen forward and off of the kidneys grab the blocks on the way up or hand again to knee and hand to heel and find the back bend again just for a moment it might feel a little more accessible yeah that looks different good and then to come to the other side in between I want us to either come to all fours or a dog and you can do that like, as gently as you wish, or if you're feeling frisky, you can curl your back toes under and clear the blanket with your right leg. And then either on all fours or down dog for a moment, open things up, stabilize once again. If you're me and you really messed up your blanket, you might have to get it ready for the other side, reforming not just your dog and your body, but your blanket. <laughs> And the nice thing about putting a count on things for yourself is it really becomes integrous because it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you don't just do something until you're bored or do it until you like it, but you just put a measure on it and you commit to, I'm going to hold this post five breaths, or I'm going to do this pranayama practice for 10 minutes. And so it's nice when you're in a pose, especially if it's one like pigeon, people either love it or hate it, to put a count on it. <laughs> You know, I used to be a love it, now I've kind of turned into a hate it and I found somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so your left hip is a different hip. I know this is surprising news. So it might need something different. Like I already know my body and I'm putting a third blanket down for my left side. So lunging the left shin forward, heel in line with the pubis so that both buttock bones are on their own side. And then either left hand to heel, pardon me, left hand to knee, right hand to heel, or hands on blocks. And pull the chest through, sort of like you were doing a floating up dog, yes. <laughs> Good, coming off of the kidneys. And then lengthen forward and up and off of the kidneys to come down into the shape. And again, I like to put one block the long way, underneath of my sternum, and then a block under my head. And then once again, I'm gonna walk my hands out to a V shape so that I really have some buoyancy, so that my lungs are available to me, so that I can be on a spit instead of collapsed. That's what the blocks are giving us here. Normally, when you see people resting down in this pose, they're very rounded through the upper middle back. That looks really nice. And this time, tune into the breath once again, but I want you to inhale for four counts. 
Retain the breath for four counts at the top, and exhale down the back for four counts. So inhaling four, retaining four at the top, exhaling down the back for four, and staying empty of air for four. It's sometimes called box breathing. But we're going to make it more interesting than a box or just a frame. And we're going to put our imagination into it once again and take the breath of the seasons. So the next time you breathe in, inhale for spring. Up the front of you, birds chirping, sun rising. It's also the dawn. And hold at the top of every in-breath for summer's ripening, the fecundity, the fertility. And exhale, fall, leaves descend down the back. In the bottom of every exhale, you're empty from winter. And commit to five rounds of the breath of the seasons. Knowing what your internal state is, if you are presently in a spring in the dawning of an idea, your internal season might not match the external season. holding for summer's ripening, fall descending, the cave of introspection, the inside of winter. It's completing those last two cycles of breath. And again, go forward to come up. So you're not just jamming into the low back, but walking up and forward. Good. And then this time, once again, either back to a dog or to all fours. You can clear the blanket if that kind of friskiness is available to you today. Or you can sit off to one side and find four points of contact again. Tuning to your breathing. Very good. And then lower down. And we're going to have a seat on our blanket. I'm going to turn and face you guys. And um, for this, I like to take my blanket a little bit wider. So I have a little more sitting room. And I'm going to use two blankets. Um, you can have three, you can have as many as you need to put yourself up on a throne. And depending on the type of blanket you have, you might need more or less. They're not all the, all blankets are not created equal. Mm. Good. Okay. So there's a couple ways that we can be in a hip stretch in this kind of seated position. Well, there's lots of ways. Option one will be to take your right shin in front of your left, just cross-legged. And most, of, most people are gonna feel quite a bit of sensation in the outer hips just being here. And you can have a couple blocks handy nearby. Um, for those of you doing the video, if you have more flexibility or external rotation in the hip, you can take the right ankle all the way to the left knee. This is not required, right? <laughs> Just being cross. Is that in your, oh, it's in her wheelhouse too. I underestimated. Should never make assumptions about people's bodies. Oh, uh, she's my student in the room is like, I have a lot of external rotation in the hips. Yeah, can you get the ankle all the way over? So there's, yes. So we don't, I don't like we, I'm speaking as the royal we, the crease in the ankle, you guys. We don't want the crease in the ankle. We want to make 90 degree angles. And you can see like for me today, for whatever reason, this is slightly elevated. This is better though than sickling the foot because when you sickle the foot, then the rotation is coming from the knee where now it's truly in the hip joint. Very good. So then from here, we're gonna take a couple little cat cows through the pelvis. And I've got my hands on my blocks again, just for a little buoyancy. See if you can really ice, yes, down into the pelvis so that the pubis is moving forward and the pubis is moving back. Nice. 
feels good. Yeah. And it's an interesting little relationship between the pelvis and then the femur bone and the acetabulum, the cup of the hip. Good. And then back to the center. So now really get up on your perineum and from your hip crease, fold yourself forward. And you can crawl the fingertips forward. And it doesn't need to be your biggest, deepest stretch, but somewhere where you can feel that sensation in the outer hips. And I like to think that I'm moving my the sex organs back. So the pelvic floor is moving back as you're coming forward. Good, and then walk your fingertips over to two o'clock. And act like you were going to drop down into like a sphinx pose. And today this is available to me. Yesterday my elbows were floating off the ground. So it's fine if they're floating, but put a little bend in them at two o'clock. And then we're gonna play with opening the side body. So this is a little bit of a funny motion, but you can even hear just to start to feel that little easeful kind of spiral. Exactly, you feel how the muscles, like there's a spiral there. And then now I want you to kind of keep going as you move to the right and roll open into a side body stretch. Yeah, with a little bend in the elbow. And then roll back forward and down. And do that a couple times and you might find like now my elbow's gotten a little bit closer to the floor. And really breathe into it. Let it be natural and easeful. So we're not forcing anything. We're just feeling into Yes, nice, that side body rotation, a little spiral, a little fluency. We play with lines because they organize things, but there's nothing in nature that's truly a line. DNA is a spiral, cells are circles, like nature is spheres, but we use lines. Nice, good, one more time. But now crawl in a big half moon all the way over to 10 o'clock. Good. And now we're going to turn this into a rotation. So if it's available to you, and it's fine if you want to come a little more upright and just spiral, if it's available to you, I'm going to plug my right elbow into the arch of my foot. Yup, exactly. And if you want, you can go like this and take it here. If it's available, you can make a fist in your right hand and draw it together with the palm of the left to spin around. Yes, you're so close though. Look at that, it's beautiful. Good, and that's perfect. You still get the spinal rotation. So nice. And then that's nice and mindful. Come out of the rotation. Come back to the center, stretch forward. Make fists in your hands and get nice and powerful and sit all the way up. Good, yes. So this is what we talked about last week, that fold from the hip and that sense of a back bend. And this is difficult, so if that's too much pressure on the back, and you don't need to go up and down right now, but I just want you to feel it's that same thing that we've been doing in class in person with the fold of the hip. Good, nice. Let's uncross and shake that out. I did this yesterday too, and I feel very good after. I'm like two days in a row, I think it'll be very nice. <laughs> Getting a little more. Repetition is how we have revelation, friends. And so the more times that we go into something, like yesterday, or the first time you do a class, it's you and your first nature, and you're trying to take all the information in. And sometimes when we do something again, then we get to apply our education. And then in time, I said this last week, you find freedom in the containment because you go out of your ground of being, which is your primal nature, up into your scholastic self, your capacity, and then up into the stellar where you get mastery and freedom. So we're gonna switch sides. Take the left leg either in front of the right. This is your um, option one. And if you need more sensation, it's available to you, you'll take the left ankle all the way to the right knee and find 90 degree angles. And you'll see if you look down between your legs now, my favorite shape is there, there's a triangle when you're sitting in this shape. And triangles are the strongest form in nature, strength, structure, and stability. And so it's night, we get to play the trinity even in the physical shape of the body. 
So same thing, just cat cow the pelvis for a moment, and I want my blocks. You don't have to have blocks, but um, blocks are like scaffolding of a building. So we get to like put ourselves up. So just a little rock back and forth in the pelvis, pubic bone and tailbone. Very good. And then back to the center from the hip crease. Sometimes I'll even put my thumbs in the fold of my hip, go up and off of the kidneys and forward. And stretch out over your legs. And notice if the side's different and respect that. It's good information. The body is always speaking. Your body is a house. It's your personal magical abode. And we do asana to learn to get access to all the rooms of our house. You don't want a ward of your house that you're not allowed in, like in the secret garden. You're not allowed in the West Wing. Like there's parts of our own bodies we don't have access to, right? And we have strengths, we have places we go very, very well. Like maybe you go well in your hips and into your flexibility in the lower body because you're someone who goes deep and you have a good solid tenacity, but you don't go up very well and you need more vision. And then we know we, there's people who live up in the third floor of their house and they have so much vision, but they can't manifest anything because they have no ground of being. So we play in the physical poses to gain more access of our personal abode. So we can occupy every room. Good. Swing yourself in a half moon over to 10 o'clock. And again, and here, like for me, I can already feel this side's more restricted than the other. I'm thinking, how will my elbows bend? Maybe. And then start to come towards the forearms. And I surprised myself. Good. And your elbows, again, might be floating or they might be all the way down. And now just start to play in that little half moon shape again. For a moment, just finding the sensation of that fascial line opening. It's like the little sway, like a blade of grass. And then start to roll it open to the side body. When it feels, oh yes. Big breathing muscles. And roll in and out of there a few times. In and out. Gentle, easeful. But it come from the inside out, you as the mediator, the dead center of yourself that's mediating grace and effort. So be effortful, but be graceful and make graceful effort. Good, this time let's hold it open for a moment the next time you come in. And just see where you can go and see what you can see and notice where restrictions are compared to the other side. We're on the lunar side of the body now, the primitive self, our feeling self. Maybe this is very useful for you because you live in the heart. Good, and then half moon over back to two o'clock, all the way to side for your spinal rotation. So again, the back of the left arm can gently come into the sole of the foot and you can just lengthen forward or make a fist in your left hand and let that hard ball meet the potential of the right palm and spiral to the right. And maybe even go 180 degrees around yourself so your left eye is looking up to the sky. And you're seeing all the way around yourself now that we've gone, go, gone both ways. 360 degrees of vision. Very nice, slowly back to the center through the fold and then make fists so you're nice and punchy and come all the way up from the hip and release. Good, undo the legs, shake them out. I'm gonna turn to the side again. You guys can stay just as you are. I just like to give you a different vision, speaking of vision. Okay. So we're gonna play a little bit with a couple of bati breaths in a forward fold. So put yourself on a little bit of a slope. So you're really on your perineum and bend your knees. And again, a couple of bati or a skull shining breath is when we pump the navel back to force the breath out. So you might just try that out the nose. And it doesn't have to be so, like sometimes when I was first learning this, it's like I was trying to be the best breather in the room. That's not what I was really doing, but it was like really overly effortful. I was like, 
Yeah, and it doesn't have to be so, yeah, do you feel that? Just a little. Yes, and it's a very warming practice, which is what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna reach down and grab our big toes. And this is why a nice bend in the knee is good. And we're gonna come in up and down with our breath. So I'm gonna inhale like a bus streak of breath almost, and exhale, come down. And I want you to be like you're on a three speed bike right now. So you're not pedaling crazy fast, but you're going up and down. And then as it starts to feel available, kick it up to a five speed. Imagine you are starting to go downhill. So you are getting a little more speed on your bike and eventually you might really start to speed it up. And we're gonna be here for about two minutes. It's a little bit irritating, which I've said to you before, it's like ascending a mountain, the air gets thin up there. And this explicit experience of pumping the breath in this forward fold, it's putting demand on the back and on the hips. It's gonna tell you something about your implicit self because you're gonna find out where you go when you're annoyed or aggravated or when you don't like something, right? We get fine, like, do you wanna run out of the room? Or are you like, no, I can do this and I'm gonna get even more tenacious. And then know what to remember and know what to forget because this will be over in a little bit and you'll forget how annoying it was and you'll remember that you're feeling well oxygenated and that your lungs are available. So go up and down for about 60 more seconds. And I'm gonna ride my horse to the finish line and really speed it up for the last little bit. You do not have to join me. Pause, take a deep breath in, sit up. And then fold down and let your back go. And again, know what to remember, know what to forget. <laughs> Good, lengthen the front of your spine and sit up. We're gonna take a spinal rotation. Get right up on your perineum, your knees bent and spiral around to the left, right hand to left knee. Look back over your shoulder. Good, and let's go the other way, get up tall, lifting off of the kidneys, left hand to right knee, right hand behind you. Again, that 180 degrees of vision. Good, come back to the center and relax that. Boom. Bizarrely difficult. <laughs> it's so difficult. It looks so simple, but these practices are demanding. So a couple choices here. You can just sit cross-legged on the blanket, or if you have more opening in your hips, you'll come up to stand on your knees and then cross your right knee in front of your left and then sit your butt back into Gomukhasana. So you get to pick if you want to be in Gomukhasana or if you want to be yeah, right knee in front of left. Sometimes people find it easier to cross from that way, but you can also just sit down. Yeah, and then walk your hands back. Good. Yep. I'm hanging. You're hanging. There you go. You can take your bottom leg, your right foot, and maybe bring it forward a little bit if it feels appropriate to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's either one knee stacked on top of the other, or you're welcome to just sit cross-legged. I'm fine with that if you're comfortable. And then let's stir the pot to the right. So hands on knees, or if you're sitting in Gomukhasana like me, I said I wasn't gonna use Sanskrit, and then I did. It's cow face pose, I'm not sure why. I guess these kind of look like horns. Spin around to the right. And notice if this is difficult for you, as in you're moving really from the shoulders, and see if you can make it smaller and let your chin stay parallel to the floor and isolate the movement of the pelvis. Yeah. So imagine that you are sitting on a clock for a moment and 12 o'clock is in front of you and your tailbone is six o'clock. 
and your right sitting bone is three and your left sitting bone is nine. I want you to rock the pelvis forward into 12 o'clock. Just the, yes. And now start to roll to three o'clock to the right sitting bone and then back to six and over to nine. And see if you can hit all the numbers in between. Notice where you like to go. Where's the comfy sofa in the basement of your house? We're down in the basement right now, so maybe you're in the game room or the family room downstairs. Where do you go really easy and can you smooth out the edges and start to make contact with every single number? You might even close your eyes so you can feel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're moving around to the right, which is our solar self. It's the scholastic self, the educated self. It's you and your second nature. It's your liver, so it's your experience. And now change directions and go to the left, which is a spin of a baseball diamond. So first base is your left sitting bone. The tailbone, the anus, the second base, right sitting bone is third. Home is the pubis. There's a pitcher's mound dead at the center, which is you mediating all of these directions. And you're spinning around to the left, which is your innocence and your inheritance and your heart. Really connected with this ground of being. Basement of the house, the foundation, sex, food, money, water, primal self, primal dialogue. Good, and then pause at the center of yourself. Take a nice deep breath in. Three sips through your mouth. Hold your breath at the top and exhale it out. Good, and uncross your legs. All right, we're gonna come back to a dog. Have a two blocks handy, one off to the side of the right and one off to the side of the left. And come back up onto the balls of the feet again. Take the seat high. So we've been playing really low. And you can probably feel it, that energy of being in the lower body, of being in the ground of being. So now we'll take things up for a moment. Back up, up, up. So we're going to lunge the right foot forward between the hands. And you're going to take a block and put it on underneath of the back thigh at an angle. And you can, I like to put it up high by my hip bone, but it can be lower on the thigh. If so, drop your back knee down first. Yeah, and then do you see the block is at an angle? Yup, exactly, there you go. Yup, good, nice. Do you feel how it's supporting you now and holding you? Good, very nice. And then take the block over to the right. So for a moment, lengthen forward and spiral your inner thigh into that black back block. Part, pardon me, the outer hip, so the inner thigh is moving back. And then unfold from your hip crease up into your lunge. Good. And then take your right hand on your right block and spiral your chest open. Your hand might come to the floor. It might come down to the lower head of the block. I almost need two blocks on my back leg because I'm so tall. So you might need more than one block back there. Or you can, if you want to be up higher in the lunge and not so deep, I will adjust my block so it's more on my thigh than on my, um, up by my hip bone. Big lateral side bend. Nice, and then come up out of the lateral side bend and take the twist. So it's the same thing we did with the hips, right? When we were sitting low, we first took the lateral side bend and now we spin around. It's a different way to access the tissues in the side of the body. Good, and then come out of the rotation, remove the block and set it aside and square off over your front leg. Walk your back toes in just a little bit if you were really extended. Get your knee in your armpit. Curl your back toes under and straighten your left leg, your back leg. And now think that you're blossoming open the back of the right knee. Stack your left heel all the way over the ball of the foot. And this might not straighten all the way. I know mine won't. Push from the ball of the foot to the right sitting bone and start to open up the back of the right leg. And walk your fingertips forward. So you're way up 
Yes, that's so nice. That looks beautiful. I know you're working so hard. And then stack the heel over the ball of the foot. Yes, do you feel how that lifts the buttock bone up? I know you're working so hard. You guys can't see my student. She's killing it. <laughs> She's doing so awesome. Good deep breath. You're not alone online at home. There's other people in the room suffering with you. I mean, doing yoga. <laughs> nice big breath. Good, and then let's travel back to either all fours or a dog, or maybe an all fours and then a dog. So nice. And then the left foot forward. And I like to drop to my knee first so I can feel where the block is going to best serve me. Yeah. Down on the knee, and then you can choose. Like, often I'll see my, um, some of my friends, and the block is way up on their front hip. But for me, because I'm so tall, to get it way up here, I have to go so deep in the lunge. So I like to put it more down on my thigh. You can see on me because my femur bones are so long, the block's like halfway between my knee and the thigh. So know that the block might be in a slightly different place for you. And then unfold from your hip crease, drive your pubic bone forward, take your right arm up, and then take that lateral side bend. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep, yeah. you're doing it right. This way would feel, it's possible, it's difficult going the other way. I'm playing with it now. Now I kind of like it. <laughs> Up and over the other way. Oh, that does feel kind of good. We might do it the other way tomorrow. <laughs> good. Nice. And then come back up through the midline and take the rotation. So now bring the right elbow to the outside of the left knee and plug your palm of the left hand into the fist of the right hand and spin. So good. And then out of the rotation. Remove the block. Curl your back toes under. Really get the heel over the ball of the right foot so that the buttock bones lift high. You can see it's like I'm up in a stiletto shoe. And then straighten, which I don't wear, but it's a good example. And then <laughs> lengthen your fingertips forward. And my left knee is making contact with my left armpit. And my left leg isn't straight. That's so nice. That's it right there. Good. This is the last big hard pose, my friend. We're coming back to the ground. <laughs> One more big breath. Good. And then travel back either to a dog or to all fours. Lower down to all fours. And I want you just to cat cow the spine. Roll out the pelvis. Take some little movements here. Very good. And then let's come to sit on blankets again for some variations of Johnny Shirshasana. You survived. It's definitely the most difficult part of of the practice. Although someone might disagree that has really tight hips, that floor stuff would have been what was difficult for them, right? Like every single person has access to different parts of themselves. Okay, so I'm going to take my right heel, and if you again have some restriction, the heel might, your right heel might be over towards the left buttock bone, left side of the groin, but eventually I want to pull my heel all the way over to the right side of my groin for this variation of Johnny Shoshasana. So option one, if you have some restriction in the body, will be to bend the left knee and just place your left forearm on a block and twist your right arm up. So this is a really nice place to be, nice and more accessible. If you'd like to go deeper, you can remove that block. I hate that word deeper because it's very deep to be here for a lot of people. I'm not sure how else we can say that. I'll think about it. If your body needs more, maybe is the more accessible way to say it, you can grab the foot and take the right arm up and really open yourself up. And then we have another option, which is to take your left hand across and grab your right knee and then take your right arm up and over. You might even be able to grab a hold 
of your left foot and then spin through that pinhole. Hmm. Yep, I bet you can do it. So well, your left hand, so your left hand will come to your knee. Yup. And then turn your torso towards your left shoulder. Yup. Exactly. Now side bend through the left side. And you can bend your left knee. Yup. And now you can reach up and over. Do you feel that? Uh -huh. And you don't have to grab the foot, but you might find it's there. Eventually. Eventually. And good news, none of us will be better people when we can hold on to our foot. Right? I always think that's good news. <laughs> And breathe into that right side. Good, nice and slow, rotate towards the leg. So come out of that bind and now take your right hand to the pinky edge of your left foot. And again, I like to wiggle around a little bit for a moment. Variation number one is just to keep these left fingertips on the floor to turn your belly over the front thigh. This is variation one, and to start to work that revolution around yourself, spinning the chest to the left. If you want more, you can take your right hand behind your back and reach for a half bind, and then turn the chest a little deeper to the left. Not required. Well, none of this is required, but you know. <laughs> I would hope no one's at home doing yoga because someone is forcing them to. <laughs> nice. And you might even be able to get the heel to the palm of the hand, like a ball in it. And then unravel that and come up nice and slow and just relax for a moment. There's a fun variation we did in class yesterday that we can do another day where you put the full folding chair in the hip and spiral around on the chair and it feels very nice. Good, switch the legs, which is from a really fun book if you like playing the chair yoga, which I certainly do. Um, that's, I think it's just called chair yoga. It's an old Iyengar book with all these old black and white photos in it and it's just showing poses you can do on a chair mm -hmm. and it's such a great book. So, and if you're thinking chair yoga is for people who can't move, you can do some very frisky practices on the chair. <laughs> I love chair yoga. So now the left heel someday, eventually maybe, will come all the way into the groin, or again, the sole of the foot can be on the inner thigh. And we're starting the same way. So again, those of you that might need a little adaptation here or need a more accessible version of the pose, you can bring a block down and just take your left arm up and spin around yourself. If you want a little more, you can grab the inside of the foot and take the left arm up. And if you're feeling very frisky, you take your right hand to your left knee like a ball in a mitt, make contact with the back of the right shoulder and the right knee, and then spin under yourself in that little pinhole, threading yourself through the eye of the needle. And honoring the differences in the sides of your body, like this side, I have my right knee bent, I had it very straight on the other side for part of the pose. It's okay to have recognize imbalances in the body. Asymmetrical poses like this reveal our asymmetries and in time can work to heal them. So nice. Three big breaths. Very good, slowly roll towards the right leg, unravel the right arm, and then grab the pinky edge of the right foot. And again, I'm keeping my knee bent on this side. I've got an irritated hamstring, not from doing this, from jujitsu, but <laughs> it's a little irritated, so I'm keeping it bent. And then I'm gonna start to spiral my chest to the right. And again, you can just walk the right fingertips out to the right and gaze to the right, or you might find that there's a little half bind available to you and you can spin around. And eventually the right hand may even come all the way down to the heel like a ball in a mitt. And always we're on a spit, so we're lengthening from pubis to navel center to sternum. And the more you go forward, you'll be able to go around yourself. 
good. So nice. And then very lovingly and gently come out and shake it out. Okay. I'm gonna play with a couple shapes here. So take your heels. This is better than yesterday. I taught on hardwood floors yesterday and my heels were sliding away around jujitsu mats today. So I've got some cushion under our heels. We're gonna take them narrower, like you were doing Ananda Balasana, happy baby on your back, but we're sitting up. So just like we do when we do happy baby. Yep. Yeah, and you can hold the ankles if the feet aren't available to you and lengthen the front of your spine. We're gonna build up towards Kamasana, turtle pose. We may or may not get there. You may or may not get there but we'll play with some steps that can help us to get there. Okay, first step towards getting there is to take your right arm to the inside. So right shoulder to right knee and spiral your chest a little bit. Yep, and you can just stay right there kind of taking a little rotation or you can take this right arm and dive under yourself just like we do an extended side angle when we bind it and take the left arm around your back. This is not required. I keep saying that. I think you guys get it by now. So you might be my student in the room. It looks like this, you guys, and it's beautiful. She's just enjoying a little spinal rotation. You might be in this little half bind with me. Either option is perfect. This is what's so lovely about yoga asana is it's just playing with our own magical abode. And so everyone doesn't need to look like everyone else. It would be boring if we did, right? Good, and then back to the midline. We don't love a mirror, right? It's difference that counts, that the multiplicity of being and difference that creates the bridge for love, right? Our most interesting conversations are with people that have a different view, right? So now, same thing, left shoulder comes to the inside of left knee, and some of you might swim it all the way under. Maybe, you can laugh at that too. Um, oh, I like this, she's kind of, she grabbed a hold of her heel for a second, which I kind of liked. It kind of looks, yeah, get your hand. So to get the hand under, you guys, what helps is if you come up and go internal rotation of the shoulder and then dive straight forward, yup, and then it would kind of rotate under. But that's internal rotation of the shoulder and a lot of us don't have a lot of internal rotation in the shoulder. It's something to work on, that's a different class though, that's mobility for shoulders, right? <laughs> Good, and then gently come out of there. And one more time, come down into that happy baby shape. Okay, you can stay right here and just enjoy it. You can even extend the legs a little bit and just turn it into kind of like a, uh, or, uh, like a wide leg straddle and just enjoy a stretch. Like if you want, you can just take the legs out into a stretch or if you're feeling frisky and you want to play with turtle pose, I'm going to bend my knees way more than they were so that I can get my fingers, my shoulders out to the side. And then I might start to straighten my legs. And some of us might even be able to bind all the way around the back. So you pick if you're going to take just a wide leg fold or if you're going to start playing for turtle. You choose what's appropriate. Nice, good. Gently crawl up and out of there. Whew. Good. Depending on where you went, that can be intense. And let's take a forward fold. Just a gentle, easeful Paschimottanasana. I'm gonna bend my knees. I like a block between my legs so I have something to rest my forehead on. We won't stay here too terribly long, but just like the most restorative forward fold you can do. 
And you'll probably find, I know for myself, after a class where we've done so much forward bending, this feels so easy now compared to, there's just a sense of lightness in it. All those much more difficult forward bends prepare us for this simple forward bend. We won't say difficult, we'll say complex. And then the simplicity has such elegance. You feel so supported. So again, put your imagination in it. Breathe in a sphere around yourself once again. Fire up the back. Water grace descending down the front. in the front of your spine and come all the way up. Okay, and we're going to set up for some breath work, some pranayama. So we want to put um, some water in the hose, if you will. I'm going to sit in Varasana on my block, but you're welcome to sit cross-legged on blankets. That's a beautiful place to be. Do you have more space when you're sitting on a block? Does it give you more space because you collapse. Yeah, so the, my student in the room just asked, does it give you more space when you're up? And 100% yes. When you're up, I always like my hips over my knees when I'm doing any kind of pranayama. And um, you can put, yeah, I was just going to say, you can put a blanket up on top of your, uh, you can put a blanket up on top of your, your bolt block, it's almost like bolster, on top of your bol your block, I just said it again, sorry guys, <laughs> on your block to make it less um, uh, crunchy and less uncomfortable. Like, cause these blocks can be hard, right? So you can definitely put something under it to make it a little squishier. How does that feel? And then if you want, so um, I'll throw this to my student in a second as well. I like to strap my thighs in and I put the strap under my knees and then around the top and it just gives you a boundary so that you don't have to work so hard. So pardon me while I go give this to you. This lovely lady. So you put it under your knees yep. and around. It'll feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay, isn't that better? Yeah. Yeah, so the strap uh, gives you support and a boundary and most of us well, all of us need boundaries, right? Like it's <laughs> boundaries that create limitless love. It's um, boundaries that allow us to manifest and get anything done in our lives, right? Like if you don't manage your time with boundaries, you won't get anything finished, right? So we get to practice having good boundaries in our poses too. Good. So tighten that up if you have the strap. If you don't, you're welcome to just sit on a blanket. And then I want you to close your eyes. Or nine tenths of the way. Find a seat that is formal and supported from the base up to the top. When we're sit it, seating in this way, the diaphragm can move easy. And bring yourself to have either two cups, one on each thigh, or one giant chalice with the back of one hand in the palm of the other you pick. And we just spent a whole hour establishing our ground of being, so be in the ground of being, the lower body. And know that you have a bottom floor, the ground of being, your primal self. It's your basement of your house, it's where the pilot light is and the water heater. It's your inheritance. And you have living quarters to your house, which is the second floor. It's your ground of doing. You have a kitchen oriented in the left shoulder quadrant and the heart, which is the hearth of the home, your community, your ability to articulate the desires. And you have a home office up there on the right side where you make deals and sign checks and take care of things in the world. And you have a personal abode right at the center of yourself, beneath your sternum. 
a secret room, no one in there but you, your implicit self. And then you have a ground of seeing, an antenna up above you. Your ability to have vision, to see the big picture. And you have a back behind you, which is your memory. And you have a front, which is your potential, always going forward. And attune your hearing to your breathing. And now imagine that you are either looking towards the tip of your nose, even though your eyes are closed, sort of like you're looking towards the tip of the nose, and sense the third eye, that prism. And then you, that is counterbalanced by the, what we call the third foot, which is your imprint on this planet. It's your perineum. So a piece of you is receptive to the universe above you, and a piece of you is connected to the earth below, like you were sitting on a crown on the throne. Like you were sitting on the throne of the earth, pardon me, wearing a crown. It's sort of like you are playing a note an octave below you and playing a note an octave above and you're the melody in between. Your root support in the stunning sky above. In the middle of you, behind your breastbone, we call the third hand. It's like this invisible part of you that is mediating all the polarities around you, the grace and the effort, the left and the right side, the seasons, offering and receiving. So now, just like we did in practice, sense the breath rising warm up the back, the fire. And exhale, let it rain down the front, cool, and receptive. Good. Now take your arms up in the shape of a V for victory. Wrap your armpits towards your heart. Make cups in your palms for gift waves. It might be raining down. And draw the lungs forward and like we were filling up a garden hose we're going to pump out about a hundred couple of ati breaths so start forcefully taking the navel point back x x x and as you pump i'm going to talk and you're going to listen and keep pumping and keep touring you're touring your own terrain making a map of yourself so keep pumping the breath and in your imagination, go down into your basement where the pilot light is. Again, food, sex, money, water, your most primal self, the place where your soul dropped in, and pump out the breath. And then walk up an imaginary staircase to the back of your right eye, to the place where you would set a goal in the back of the mind. It's the memory. It's how memory comes around and processes within us. And keep pumping the breath. And now go all the way around your back and travel to your left armpit, walking down that imaginary staircase into your kitchen and see what's in the hearth of the home where you articulate the vision that you had up in the back of the right eye and keep pumping the breath and go up to your left eye now and imagine that it's your bedroom and you are looking out into the world to see what's out there for you. And keep pumping the breath and go down below the sternum to that secret room, the room of your own, the personal abode and keep pumping the breath and trace with your imagination now down into your right sitting bone, which is where you take your car out for a spin, where you take a risk, where you go out to enact the idea that you had. And then travel up to your right armpit and reach your right arm up a little bit higher, up into that home office, and go around your back all the way down now the long road through time to your left sitting bone to your embodiment, drop your tenacity to complete your tasks, and for the last time, pump out 10 breaths up to your third eye center. Take a deep breath in, hook your thumbs. Sip in three more sips through your mouth. Hold your breath, squeeze up like a tube of toothpaste, and pop your cork. Release your arms. Bring the backs of your hands to your thighs. 
Just feel the steadiness of the breath. Now bring your hands to your heels or to your knees, depending on how you're sitting. And then inhale, or pardon me, exhale, take the pubic bone forward. And inhale, pop the pubic bone back. In, X, in, X. Putting sort of a Bastrika breath, a bellows breath on it. Imagine that you're keeping your chin parallel to the floor and that the pelvic floor is a match and the block is a giant striker and you are trying to light a match to put a proverbial fire under your ass. So anytime that we need more pliancy or we're feeling lazy or we're feeling stuck in our lower body, stuck processing, we can go fast here and give ourselves a little kick in the tush. And you can almost let it get a little wild and sloppy because everything we do in yoga is so organized and sometimes we need to let it get on the verge of falling apart. So don't let it fall apart, but push the edges of almost letting it fall apart. And I want you to count yourself down 20 breaths and when you finish, you'll just pause at the center. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, fall in a spin to the right, just like we did earlier. And now know how you're using time. When we spin to the right, it's the direction of time, the direction of a clock, the direction of the spin of the planet. So go around yourself and you can go nice and slow like you were churning butter, like you were taking all the bits of yourself and making it creamy and smooth. And know that the dawn is rising at the left shoulder in the east and high noon is at your sternum and the sun is setting at the right shoulder at dusk in the west. And around your back, you own the night. You sleep through the night. And lunar midnight is at the back of the spine. Moon descends the back of the left shoulder as the sun is rising. And you can always be assured that spring will rise and that the dawn of a new day will come. So when it feels like the world is burning around you, you know that the universe is deeply patterned and that things are going to unfold. And that is such a gift. Now change directions and go to the left. Yes. Be counterculture, as we say. Go against the grain now. Be in the lunar. Go against the spin of time. Because you want to have a lot of options, because when you have options, you're powerful. So know how to go to the left. So good. And then pause in the center. and Get very tall again. Take a nice deep breath in. Three more sips through your mouth. Hold your breath and pop your cork. Soften all the muscles, the fascia. Again, let fire rise and water descend. Manipulating your inner alchemy. How quickly can you turn on and get invested in the practice and how quickly can you release? Another piece of you is always holding your capacity to handle yourself. So know what game you're playing. Allow life to happen through you. Feel those little liminal nodes of breath at the top of the inhale and the bottom of the exhale. Those liminal spaces. Good, and then make fists in your hands. We're gonna go for what we call a camel ride and start to pump your little fist. Good, and now start to pump the breath. And let it get really bouncy. So you might even feel like your butt's starting to wanna to pop up off your block a little bit, like you were riding a racehorse around the track a few times to approach the finish line. Now it's like we went outside and we turned up our hose on maximum. So we are like spraying out our hose to get nice and enlivened for the rest of our day. X, 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 X. Keep pumping the breath, and you might even really act like you were riding to the end of the finish line for about the last 30 seconds. Take a deep breath in, swing your arms up, hook your thumbs. Three sips through your mouth. Hold your breath at the top. Exhale. 
Bring the backs of your hands to your thighs. Take all the patterning off the breath. Let it be wild. You just let that horse out of the racetrack. And it's run out into the field. And it's pausing. No direction anymore. Just letting it be. Put yourself dead center at the steering wheel. Steering wheel. Body is a house that travels. It's a vehicle. Know you can see in the rear view mirror the memory behind you and that when you change the direction of the car, it opens up new memories behind you. You can see new road. Know that when you get where you want to go, you'll have the ping of joy. Everything behind you, you'll see it as a gift. So if you are not happy with your circumstances, how can you change the vision? Know you have a left side that handles your heart and a right side that handles the world and you're right in the center, that invisible third hand, mediating, manipulating. You have this ground of being that allows for capacity. You anchor in the lower body to come up and out. Now take a deep breath in for the preciousness of your unique container. And then let it rise from the depths as you exhale, go out the top of your head and turn that preciousness into poetry to share it with the world. So inhale for the personal and exhale to participate. And then take your hands in front of your face and rub your palms together. Really vigorous, get lots of heat. Cup your palms over your eyes. Feel the muscles around your face, around your eyes softening. Open your eyes behind your hands and let in the dark. Release your palms, let in the light. And welcome yourself back. My name is Selena Garafino, and I am the founder and the creator of the Evolve Method. The Evolve Method is the result of 20-some years of my personal practice, almost 15 years of teaching, and over six years of running yoga teacher trainings. This program is anchored in classical yoga studies, personal development coaching with licensed professionals, and modern movement research. This really embodies what it is to be part of the Evolve Method. Our programs are systematic. Your 200-hour teacher training is a program that sets you up with all the kinesiological, the anatomical knowledge, the foundation of yoga history and philosophy, as well as a very strong anchoring in modern movement research and functional anatomy. And then out of that, when you learn this basic sequencing structure and this capacity to teach vinyasa, hatha yoga, and restorative yoga, you're able to build on that in our advanced programming, which teaches things like the energetics of asana, um, tantric teachings on mythology and embodying conscious myth in your teachings and in your practice. The program also has a ton of modern movement that comes to us from different mobility systems and joint health systems so that you can truly practice for longevity. We named this program the Evolve Method because it's about more than a physical practice. It's about you learning to navigate better every single area of your life, to be the author of your story and your destiny, to live out your dreams and to bring your medicine to the world and really be able to serve. I'm so excited to uh, give this offering to you and I hope you'll consider joining us either online or in person.